All right, you guys. So today I'm gonna to be starting a new video log series about car maintenance. Car maintenance is one way that I like to become self-sufficient because quite frankly, dealerships are dealerships and they're otherwise known as a dealership for a reason. They charge a buttload for labor and repairs and you wind up spending an arm and a leg just to get a brake job change. One of the first jobs that I paid a dealership for was to do a brake job, which involved pads and rotors. And that job wound up costing me $1,200. That was on a Japanese car, an Acura RSX. So from that point onwards, I was like, you know what? I'm not a millionaire. Why don't I learn how to do the pads myself so if I ever run into the situation again, I can do it myself. Today we're going to be going over how to do a pad change on this car right behind me, my old trusty 08 Nissan Altima Coupe. Okay, so first things first, what you're going to need to do in order to change your pads is you got to get the car up in the air and at least be able to take off the wheels. In order to do that, you can use the jack that you have in the back of most cars or you're going to have to pick one up if you on a BMW and you have run flats and they don't come with a spare or something like that. In my case, I actually bought a hydraulic jack a little while ago, which I use for all my car repairs. And I have four jack stands, which I'll be using today. You're also gonna need a lug nut socket, you know, a breaker bar in order to get the lug nuts loose. You can use the tire iron that's in the back of your car too to pop those off. Okay, so I'm gonna be using my hydraulic jack and I'm gonna be using these some jack stands just for safety. Very important, you definitely don't want to lift the car up and just have the weight of the car leaning on the hydraulic jack itself. Pretty unsafe if that thing fails. Also, another thing you want to do before you actually lift the car up in the air is you want to crack those lug nuts loose. It's going to be really hard to get those loose if the wheel is free spinning and you have the car up in the air already. Then once you try to turn your wrench, the wheel's just going to spin. So I'm going to crack those loose right now. Oh, by the way, anytime you do any sort of car work, make sure you're wearing clothes you don't care about because you're working on your car. It's gonna get really dirty unless you're working on a brand new car fresh out of the factory, which usually isn't the case. Then you're gonna have most of your repairs done at the dealership. But if you're doing your own car work, make sure you wear these. So I have my breaker bar here and I have a two inch extension with a 21 millimeter socket. It's the size of the socket that I need to take my lug nuts off. It's the size of my lug nuts. So I'm just gonna use these in the brake bar to get these things loose before I put the car in. About a quarter inch of a turn is all you need in order to get these things loose. Now we can work on raising the car. When raising your car up, you can either do exactly what I did, which is basically use a part of the front subframe or use part of the radiator mount some part of the front end that's strong enough to support the force of the hydraulic jack and then basically use that to jack up both sides what i've seen people do is they also use the rails which are part of the frame on the sides of the car in order to use that as a lifting point for the jack and then basically lift up one corner at a time whatever works <laughs> I use the radiator support as my front jacking point. Over here in the rear, I'm using the center brace which holds the control arms of the suspension. Again, whatever works. Okay, so let's get those jack stands in place. ready to take off the wheels. Since these lug nuts are already loose from when you broke them out before we actually lifted the car, these should come out just with using this extension in the socket.
Alright guys, so before you move on to working on the brakes, you want to make sure that your brake fluid reservoir is opened. Because you're going to be compressing the caliper cylinders, and when you do that, all this air that's built up in the system is going to want to escape, so you want to give it some space to escape. My reservoir is right over here. This is the driver's side, um, and this is the left front strut bar right over here. So just medial to it is my brake reservoir. So I'm just gonna open that up before we move on. And you can set this aside. Okay, so we are at the front driver's side wheel right now. And I got the wheel off. I have the brake assembly exposed right over here. So we're gonna finally get to the brakes. For those of you who have not touched brakes at all in your life, here's a simple lesson. Here's a brake rotor, or brake disc. Here's a brake caliper. Uh, the caliper has a piston in it, which basically compresses and squeezes. And to make sure that the caliper isn't pressing directly on the disc, there's this thing called a brake pad. What we're gonna do right now is we're going to loosen up this caliper, bring it up, swing it upwards, and then replace these pads. You're gonna take your half inch drive wrench, you're gonna use a 14 millimeter socket on this particular application, this car. On your car, the sizes might be a little different depending on if you have a German, Japanese, or European make car. The way you wanna swing this caliper up is, if you can, leave everything else alone, just pop off the bottom caliper bolt. That's gonna be the easiest way to do that. Once you get that 14 millimeter bolt out, then you can basically rotate, pivot this caliper on the top 14 millimeter bolt it's just gonna swing out of the way and it's gonna be easy as pie for you. I'll show you. Bolt came out. And then you just pivot this caliper right now. Ah, that's simple enough. And then it just rests there. Then you can take the old pads out. Old pad. See, here's an idea of how a slightly worn pad looks. Now, this may not be completely worn down, but it's actually causing a lot of noise issues whenever I hit the brakes. So I'm replacing them with pads that I really, really trust. These are cheap pads. I actually got them off eBay. And they did well for just a couple of months. Well, actually about four months. But these right over here, Hawk pads, HBS pads. They're ferrocarbon or carbon ceramic. They're really similar to what race applications use, like for example, what's used in the Porsche 911. I know it's really overkill for this application, which is a Nissan Altima Coupe, but we're going to use them anyway. This is to kind of give you an example of how a worn pad looks compared to a new one. You see the thickness? Here's a worn pad. You can kind of see that. And here is a new pad. <laughs> them right next to each other. See that? Let's put these bad boys in. You'll notice on brake pads, some pads actually have these brackets over here on the top or bottom. And what these are supposed to do is they're actually supposed to hook onto these little, these little things right over here, these clips on the caliper bracket. And it's supposed to just make the future brake pad changes easier by creating a little spring action right over here. They're not really necessary. They don't have any purpose in terms of braking and if you don't use them, or even if these brackets are missing off your pads that you bought, it wouldn't be particularly unsafe. You can still use them. In my scenario, I like to use the bracketed pads towards the rear of the rotor because that way when I remove the rotor, I don't need to be reaching in there and struggling. I have that little spring to assist me. So I'm gonna use these flat ones towards the front of the rotor. Once you have your pad sitting nice and flush up against the rotor, then it's just a matter of getting this caliper to fit back in. As you can tell, this caliper is actually sticking out a little bit closer to me than I'd like it to be. 
it's compressed a little bit because it's used to the thickness of these old worn out uh, pads. But as you saw, the new pads are thicker. So we're gonna have to compress this caliper so when I swing it down, it doesn't hit and it actually fits inside this assembly. We're gonna take that seat clamp and compress this thing. Okay, so now that the seat clamp has compressed that caliper, we could probably slide this caliper right back down and it'll fit. There you go. Now we need to reinstall that 14 millimeter bolt that we removed from the caliper bracket. Now when you tighten this, you need to make sure it's snug. There is a particular torque rating for it. If you look on service manuals, it'll probably be somewhere around 54 pounds for a Japanese car like this. Um, if you have a torque wrench, cool, use it, especially if your torque wrench is small enough to fit in this kind of space. But my wheel well is pretty small. I can't get my torque wrench in there. So I basically estimate, you know, I'm, I have a good feel with my hands and that's something that as you work on cars, you're gonna get more of a feel for. But, you know, I'm just gonna basically estimate. If you need, use a hammer. Okay, so now we're done with this side. We can move on to the next corner. We repeat this process for the opposite side. You can do this for the front passenger side and then we can move on to the rear. Okay, so for the rear of the car, most of the process is exactly the same. You're just gonna pop off the bottom caliper bolt and you're gonna flip the caliper up, compress, take out the pads, put in the new pads, and you're all set, ready to go. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna take off the top caliper bolt because my brake line is in the way over here and I can't really get my wrench to fit. Plus this piece right over here, this camber arm, uh, is actually preventing me from getting my socket on that lower bolt. So I'm just gonna take off this top one and flip it downwards, same principle. caliper bolt. I'm gonna slide this down Boom. and you see your non-compressed caliper cylinder which we're gonna take down and also these pads which we're gonna replace. Easy as pie. Again, a little comparison of the thickness of the old pads and the new pads. See it? And you're gonna take your same C-clamp and you're gonna compress the cylinder. When you uncompress your cylinder, there's no need to really tighten your clamp that much. All you're trying to do is get this caliper to open up so it can fit the new pads. Slide in, and you're all set. Not much to it. Again, 54 pounds, but you can estimate if you can't fit a torque wrench in there. That'll do. All right, so if you do this on the next two corners, you're all set. Congratulations, if you made it this far, you basically changed your pads. Now you just want to make sure everything runs correctly. So what we're going to do now is we're going to basically go over all the rotors. We're going to clean it with some brake clean. You just want to make sure those rotors are nice and shiny and clean so, you know, when you hit your brakes, the pads aren't rubbing any impurities up against your brakes. Um, and then we're basically going to compress those cylinders once again inside the calipers by hitting the brake pedal with the cap off the brake reservoir. And then, once we do that, we're gonna tighten up that brake reservoir and then do the most fun part of this whole process, bedding in those pads. Okay, so it's time to put the wheels back on. So, I haven't rotated the tires in a long time, so I'm actually gonna wind up doing that right now. 
it just means actually switching the places of the tires so they have equal amounts of wear. The best way to do that is you actually bring both front wheels, you just bring them right back. Left front actually becomes the left rear, the right front becomes the right rear, and then basically you take the two rears, bring them up front, but you switch the sides. Right rear becomes the left front, and then the left rear becomes the right front. The way that we're going to get the wheels back on is, car still in the air, I'm gonna put all the wheels back on, slowly tighten, well, slightly tighten up the lug nuts so they're nice and snug, but I'm not gonna get full tightness here because the car's still up in the air. Then I'm gonna bring the car back down, use the jack in order to do that, move the jack stands. Then we're gonna tighten each of the lug nuts to about 81 pound-feet of torque because that is exactly what Nissan specifies in their service manual. That'll make sure it's tight enough that the wheel's not gonna fall off mid-drive. It's also going to be loose enough that it's not gonna strip those studs that are coming off the wheel bearing. so that we can compress those cylinders inside the calipers and then we can actually go ahead and seal up that reservoir again. Then our brake pad change is done. Once it starts to feel a little firm, your job is done. All right, now we can go ahead and seal up that reservoir cap. Done. Now this takes us to the most fun part of the replacement process. You gotta break in your pads. You have to bed them in. And what that basically means is you have to match the surfaces of the pads to the surfaces of the rotors so they're perfectly flush together. And the way that you do that is you basically have to bring your car up to speed about 60 miles an hour and brake as fast as you can. That's gonna basically get all the excess material off the pad and get it nice and smooth and contoured with the rotor so you have as much surface as possible. And we're gonna do that process right now and I'll show it to you. You basically have to drive up to 60 miles an hour and then brake really freaking hard. You do that five times over to basically get the pads and the rotors heated up so that enough material can basically dissolve off the pad. Once you do that about five times or so, those brakes are gonna be smoking hot. You're gonna have bedded in those brakes and a nice film with the material of your pad should be adhered over and stuck to the rotor. Then your braking in process is complete. So of course you wanna make sure those brakes work and it seems to be working perfectly fine right now. I'm able to stop. I know that they're safe. I tightened up everything perfectly fine. So now we're gonna have some fun with it. I'm just gonna basically accelerate. I know it sounds ugly, I have a CVT. Now that I am at 60, I'm just gonna break really hard. You don't wanna let the car come to a complete stop when you do it, because otherwise it's going to leave a nasty imprint on the rotor right where the, that rotor stopped. So you basically wanna accelerate up to 60, break hard as you can, and then Stop braking and release your pedal right before you hit zero. Brake. All right, that seemed to work pretty well. That means my pads are actually doing a better job stopping the car than my tires are. I'm gonna have to change my tires soon too. Trial number three. Trial number four. One last time and I should be ready. Pads are definitely doing a better job and these things 
things definitely have more bite than the pads I had on before. process is done. I definitely feel a noticeable difference with how well these pads are biting my rotors. I mean, when I first dropped the pads in, they definitely made a noticeable difference over the old pads. And now that I've bended them in, they feel great. It's nice and progressive. As soon as I hit the brake pedal, it stops and it gets progressively stronger as that pedal goes in. And that's exactly how you want your brake to feel. So, you know, this doesn't exactly get me Ferrari style brakes, gets me the same material, doesn't get me the same feel, but it gets me just a little bit closer on a car that is considered an economy car. And you know, it saves me a few extra bucks. You know, instead of going to the dealership where they charge you about $60 an hour for labor, and they'll say it's like a two, three hour job, basically do it yourself within an hour and a half. and you're able to get some better pads in there for less money. And so that is your DIY brake change.